Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, you know, um, Friday's video, boy, I'll tell you, um, I was looking at that video and, and I was looking at the comments and I was thinking how far we've come as far as a channel in the last year. And and a lot of you are new and, and like welcome, but some of you have been here for, you know, a year or two. And, and you remember when we first started how... Uh, we were getting a lot of grief from the patina guys, the, the, the patina boys, remember? Every time I would take a, uh, a tool and I would bring it to the wire brush or the, you know, the belt and they'd be like, oh, you ruined it. You ruined the tool, you know? And, and I remember the arguments we were having with the patina guys, you know, how they thought that all the old tools should be brown and I'm doing a disservice. And I was like, dude, I don't mess with any good tools. And they're like, it doesn't matter. You should leave them brown. They're supposed to be brown. God wanted them brown, or he wouldn't have made patina. <laughs> it was funny, we had some good times. Remember the arguments we used to have? I was just thinking about that. It was a lot of fun. A lot of goofing went on. And, and But uh, now, the funny thing is that uh, those that are on board, and 99% of you are, understand it now you know like you understand with what we're doing here <laughs> what the fun we're having and it's so funny because now you kind of expect it you know like if i was to put out a tool and uh just like wire brush it and clean it up you'd be like what are you doing you didn't even polish it you didn't even there's no scout craft of red in there what are you doing so i i find that funny um the one thing i found funny was this wrench with the two colors one on each side uh you know, that was a little strange too. When you first saw that, you're like, one color on one side, one on the other. It just don't make sense. It should be the same. But then you kind of get it. You're like, yeah, I understand because you, you, you don't really know what the wrench is going to look like until you put the color on there. And then after you do a couple, then you can start doing uh, a wrench in the full color. But what I was amazed at how many people were split. It was like a 50-50 split with the, the yellow and the, the plum crate or the purple or candy purple. It was really, I liked them both. I, I love those colors. And and uh, so, so that went well. I really appreciate your, your input on that. And uh, let's start off and, and show you what I picked up at the antique store okay, on Friday. First off, uh, once Gina showed me the hunk of junk and I went over and, and picked it up, I said, where did you get that from? It was a box and then there was this wrench in that box. There was a, so I said, oh, look at this. And uh, now here's another hunk. Now this one's a little worse off than the other one, obviously. You know, the other one had that nice orange rust. This one here has some definite, you know, disfigurement in that, but it's still, the jaws are in great shape. It still works good. You can see how this works. That's a nice looking wrench, right? Now you can see here, it's called a, uh, it says nut gear wrench, trademark eight inch. And you can see how that works, you know? And it looks like it'd be a nice little wrench, huh? I guess, you know, depending on the size of, of what capacity it could take, but it really looks like it would work good. I want to, okay, here's the problem with this wrench, okay? See these rivets? Okay, rivets are always a problem because if you drill them out and you, you can't, you know, you're peeing over rivets, they don't look the same. The factory rivets are so nice. So I don't know. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put this, drop this in some vinegar. And then we'll get back and see what it looks like when it's semi clean. If I can get as much cleaned up as I can, you know, I'm going to see what I can do. So we'll put it in vinegar now. And okay, uh, the other things ahead. I picked up, I had to pick up one of these, you know, this is, it's full. It's a full can of oil and it's, uh, you know, the vintage style. Now I like the new plastic containers better. The brand new ones are really good. But uh, these tended to, sometimes they would leak around this seal here, you know, sometimes, but... Uh, like I said, for three dollars, it's a vintage oil can. Then I picked up this. This is Broma Paint Master Gold. It's I don't think it's ever been opened, and uh, you can see I paid five dollars for this. Now you know, uh, this is what a half pint. Uh, a half pint of, of paint today goes for like ten dollars. So this is I'm sure it's fine because this old stuff when it's not open, this is the good stuff. It's got the lead, all that kind of stuff in there. Then of course I picked up these. Now. There were two sets of these. The one you saw in the video was in worse shape. I was looking at it, but it had the bad rust on it. And then I looked at, I saw this other one in there and this one was in much nicer shape. You can see it's still got some of the original color in there. Uh, this was green in here and um, it works. You know, it's the blades are not chipped, everything, you know. And you can see there's a name on here too. You can see this name. I'll try and get it in the light so you can see. There we go. 
See that, that name there? And, uh, I mean, this is a, a nice pair. And look over here. They got like the perfect, they're tight, you know, and it's got metal on the back. So it's not all wood and very nice. So we're going to clean these up and put them back with green. There must have been a color in here somewhere when I start cleaning up where the USA is. So we'll look over here. This will be a nice restoration. We'll get to that. And then lastly, I picked up these. Let me show you. And lastly, I picked up these. Now, when I went into that second uh, antique store, I like to talk to the guy. And that's, you got to talk to these people. And another thing is really important is I never try and bargain with the guy in the beginning. Because you know something? When they start to know that you're not a guy that's, you know, if they throw out a price and you're going to try and half it on them, they're always going to give you high prices, whereas when I go there, I always say, okay, if it's fair, I buy it. And then they get to know you, and then they give you a price right off the bat. That's a good price. So anyway, you see this here? Uh, this is a, an old thermometer. <laughs> Some of you old-timers remember these. Some of you new guys are saying, what is that? Anyway, an old-time thermometer, right? So the story behind this is the guy went to a house and a lady called up and she says, look, I got some thermometers. And he's thinking these old, you know, the advertising thermometers, things like that. So he shoots over there. <laughs> it turns out she's got her father worked in for Empire, Empire Thermometer Company. And she had a couple boxes of these. So he bought like one box and he said there was like a thousand in there by the time he got home. So... I said, oh, I, I, this is the same type I had when I was a kid. So I said, how much do you want? He goes, oh, a buck a piece. So I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to take 10. So again, like I said, the guy's really cool with me because I said, you know, I didn't try and say, so he goes, you know what? Here, he goes, I'll give you, I'll give you 25 for, uh, for 10 bucks. And I said, oh, awesome. So I think I have a lifetime supply of these. By the way, you know what the difference is between the oral and the rectal thermometer Okay, so uh, other than that, uh, I, I think it's pretty cool. Do you remember these when you were a kid or you still use them or do you have the electric? Okay, well, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do today, what project. Um, let's take a ride, take a look upstate. I went upstate last week. I shot some footage. Let me get it off the phone and give you a look-see. Maybe you're in a warm area and uh, you haven't had any snow yet. This will... This will this will give you a taste of snow. Okay, I'm up at my property. It's a beautiful day. It's only about the upper 40s up here. And, uh, you know, we've had some snow up here. I, I, I don't get up here as much in the wintertime. You can see the snow uh, behind me. You can see how much snow we got. Quite a bit of snow. But one of the things that uh, when you own a piece of property and you come up, uh, I had a tree blow down. Can you see this tree behind me? Can you see that tree? That tree blew down. And uh, I'll show you the other side because we had a bad ice storm. A little bit of work to do as soon as I'm not going to do it now. I'll wait for the spring. Now here's my pond. It's uh, not frozen over, but you could see uh, had a couple trees blow down in it, and might be a little bit of ice under there. I wouldn't chance it walking across, especially my size, right? And uh, here's the tree. You could see the base of it. It blew over. You know, it was up there with these, and I guess you could see the size of it. So I'm gonna have to uh, cut that up. It's uh, believe it or not, it's a it's not a big job with a chainsaw in the spring. But if I was gonna try and do it now, it would just be too much work. Again, here's the pond. This is always such a pretty area, isn't it? You know, with the uh, the sun, especially at this time of year. And you can see all the deer tracks. We got a lot of deer tracks that come through this way, and uh, they like to come around here. See, there's a little area here that they like to walk around more deer tracks and you could tell i don't know if you get a lot of snow this is perfect snowman weather <laughs> if you wanted to build a snowman it's just the right packing okay so let's see what we can do maybe with these these uh, hedge trimmers i do have a collection of nice hedge trimmers that i will have to show you one day now we're going to mount this into the vise here okay this the back of the nut and then we're going to apply some heat to the front because remember this is banged down here if you could look real close you could see it's it's kind of banged over so we're going to apply heat there because we want to soften this up so we could take the nut off so we'll get a good maybe a six point socket something that'll get a good uh hold on there we have this in the vise we'll apply some heat and twist it off hopefully
Okay, the good news is I didn't need any heat really. It wasn't peened over. Uh, you could see it's, it's that's because this side is threaded, but it, it never hurts. I don't get it red hot. I just warm it up, and this way I could feel if there's any resistance, but there wasn't. So it wasn't peened over. I guess it uses this lock washer and the fact that this is threaded on. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some paint stripper because I'm going to take it to the wire brush and if it's lead paint I don't want to be getting it into the air here so I'm going to take some paint stripper you see that nice green I'm going to just spray it in there get rid of that uh, green and then uh, clean it up and get some of the grease and apparently this one was oiled which is nice you know people used to take care of the tools and put some oil on it which preserves it but it's it makes it kind of a mess so then we'll we'll clean it up we'll okay about it. 10 minutes using i like to use this heavy duty uh citrus degreaser by zep it smells good it's uh, pretty much non-toxic and and I, I did a lot around here around the grease there that's where it was greased up and you don't want to contaminate your wire wheels and stuff but see this over here this little section that's what it looked like. See that? That's what the blades looked like when they were new. Can you imagine walking into a hardware store in the 50s and seeing one of these all shiny new? And I, I, I won't be able to get the blade back to that because especially since I can't take it off, you know, without putting new rivets and I don't have that. So uh, we're going to work around it, try and get it, you know, so it looks somewhat decent. And then over here we can get that nice and then the handles will work on. So it should look nice. It should be presentable and let's get working on it. Okay, it's been about uh, 40 minutes later and we got all the rust, the surface rust off using the wire brushes. Now we're going to go to the fiber wheel. You see, we have a lot of this, this pitting and things like that. We're going to try and do as much as we can. On the edges here, we're going to go with the uh, belt sander because it has a, you know, a nice give to it to get that rounded area. And of course, the scales here we didn't touch yet, but um, you can see how it's coming now. That's the uh, post wire brush evaluation and uh, now we can see the name here and this says uh, R. Heimish so we'll look that up and see if we can find any information but they are pretty aren't they okay let's uh, go to the uh, have dinner come back and we'll go to the five wheel right here we are right before paint and stain Got to stain the handles, got to paint in here, clean everything out in there, uh, and then we're going to polish. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what these clippers look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. I'm uh, pretty happy with the way these came out. This is as close as I could get it to the way these would have looked new. Uh, I was able to get the green paint, you know, the same exact color, and it just so happens that's Kentucky green, my 40-year-old plus paint that I bought when I was 14 years old, still works great. Uh, I baked it on the furnace, so that's really in there well, and uh, the handles came out real nice. Uh, a little gunstock stain followed by two coats of shellac. Then uh, I steel wooled it down and then waxed it. So look how nice they came out, huh? And then look at the backs here, all polished out, and painted on the back. And I got the blades as good as I can get them. You know, these are like hollow ground. Listen to this. Oh, oh this you got to see. <laughs> a little scout craft of red in the, uh, in the lettering there. And uh, there you go. And uh, listen to this. And you'll, I think you'll appreciate it. Listen to this. You know, the blades are so nice now. I sharpened them up. Uh, this is, I guess, just the way this would have looked hanging up in the hardware store back uh, 50, 60 years ago. And how could you not want to buy one of these, you know? I mean, look at that. It was just a, such a pretty hedge trimmer. And uh, and like I said, I have a lot of uh, of these clippers and uh, that I collect, but I collect the different ones. But this one is just a, a beauty, huh? And it came out real nice. Uh, had to redo that. A funny story real quick. I was buffing out the nut here. See this nut? I was buffing out on the buffer and I turned it the wrong way and the spinning the spinning wheel knocked the nut off of the uh, bolt at about 60 miles an hour when it shot across the shop. I was like, oh my God, I'll never find it. And uh, I started ripping apart things looking for it. I couldn't find it. And I was like, oh, and it's a weird thread. 
something that I don't have. So thank God I found it. It was tucked in one of the mats about 15 feet away. So boy, that was a catastrophe that uh, was avoided. But real nice. Aren't these a, a classic pair of uh, hedge trimmers? Hope you enjoyed this one. This was a lot of fun. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll talk to you again on Wednesday, right? Take care now. Bye-bye.